Balanced views, gift, and contribution is the standardized solution to education and the nature of intelligence, or the nature of your mind. That's what we all demonstrate when we come together, the, the benefits and the results of a standardized, of the standardized solution to education and to the nature of our intelligence. It provides, the four mainstays of balanced view provides the lifestyle for us to really enact our beneficial potencies due to relying on the nature of our intelligence. So this training is not just some kind of abstract philosophy. It's about really enacting the instructions given in the Four Mainstays lifestyle, identifying the benefits and value in your own life, and then naturally wanting to contribute your gifts, strengths, and talents to the whole of humanity and beyond. So in, in our centers, it's very obvious the demonstrations that start to come about due to relying on the standardized solution to education and the nature of intelligence. I mean, if you've been coming here for this season, it's our last day of being here for four months. If you've been coming during this season, you'll see a massive difference in the way people relate and how they carry themselves on a daily basis. What I find, it's, it's very open, it's very authentic, it's genuine, there's a deep sense of care, there's a responsivity to every time, place, circumstance and result, a sense of inclusivity regardless of background, and it's completely harmonious. You know, everything we do here in the centers works very efficiently, and it's a lot of fun, and we get a lot done. Now you can apply this to any field of interest, but most importantly apply it to your own community of internal data. This is where the, the, the initial practice comes about, by testing out the education in your own community of data. So open intelligence, again, it's the nature of your own intelligence. We need the introduction to open t intelligence first, the direct introduction to open intelligence. We've given that every day for four months. We'll give it again. Stop thinking for a moment. What's looking through your eyes, that is open intelligence. Your power to know is open intelligence. We don't need to complicate it. Many people come to the training and try to compare the concept of open intelligence to many other things that they've heard and believed or not believed. So there's a lot of comparison going on. That's just natural. That's something I did. Is it like this? Or maybe it's a little bit like this? Or maybe it's like that? But the instruction we offer is just to identify this open intelligence, repeat the identification or the, you could say, emphasis on open intelligence, and repeat that whenever you naturally remember to do so emphasize open intelligence. Directly confirm this in your direct experience that your power to know, it's there, you identify it. When you identify it, very practically, emphasizing open intelligence for short moments is the opposite to indulging, avoiding, or replacing everything that we experience. So. Uh, in short moments, allow all what we call data, thoughts, emotions, sensations, experiences, concepts, belief systems. In short moments, let them be as they are, without the habitual responses to them. And that usually only happens for a short moment because we've been living a lifetime of indulging, avoiding, and replacing. So in short moments, when you naturally remember to do so, identify your power to know, and, and emphasize it, and let everything be as it is, like you would let the rays of the sun in the space be as they are. So this is the simple practice, and you can do this many times, and then the importance of this is to really confirm that open intelligence is the basis of the thinking, it's the basis of the emotions, it's the basis of the sensations, and it is inseparable to them. Like the color blue is inseparable from the sky, your power to know is inseparable from everything you perceive or even not perceive.
we instinctively start to really recognize that we are inseparable from everything. We're not a limited creature that is somehow, whatever, flawed or whatever it is, needing to somehow integrate itself back into nature's intelligence. I think that's what I was trying to do, integrate myself into this comprehensive intelligence. But being introduced to it and seeing it's already me, I don't have to go anywhere else to get it, that re it really resonated with me, that introduction. And then to repeat it again and again, it just became more and more apparent and I gained confidence that my data cannot take me down. My thoughts cannot take me down, my emotions cannot take me down, my sensations cannot take me down. They cannot make me act in harmful ways. They do not have the power to ruin my day. And in fact, all of my data are in fact the beneficial potency and liveliness of my life, of our lives. So what that meant was any time that I experienced something negative, firstly I re relied on the short moments and also the rest of the four mainstays which I'll talk about. Letting it be as it is and more and more I started to experience there's nothing wrong with my so-called negative data. And actually deriving great satisfaction from anything that I experience. And also seeing clear discernment, keen insight, into how to be of benefit in that moment to myself and others. So that really became the prime motivation, just how can I benefit myself and others? I don't want to live a life anymore where I don't feel like I'm benefited. I just don't want to live that way anymore. It doesn't make sense that we're put on this earth to live a miserable life. I, I just, you know, in one extreme I was like, all right, I, I've given up. On the other hand, I knew there was something much more precious to my normal life than what people were telling me. And that's why when you meet a lot of people in Balanced View who are actually demonstrating this, you really start to recognize that that is a possibility and it's coming about. A life of total empowerment for ourselves and everyone. So once you start to see that it, this training works in yourself, you see that it has the potential to work for anyone who's interested and at some point, everyone will have to come along anyway, because it'll just be the norm, the mainstream. But it really takes the four mainstays, all of the four mainstays, to really have this become our direct experience in all of life's circumstances, in all daily activities. Uh, otherwise, there's a lot of thinking about it, you know, like trying to think about you know, if we let desire be as it is, how will, we, <laughs> how will we enjoy life or how will we do anything? I mean, that, when you start thinking about it, it doesn't make any sense. So then, for me, very practically, I just came to the open meetings and started letting my desire be as it is and seeing what happened. The desire of feeling totally connected with so many people, like I said, I didn't, there wasn't the need or reaction to jump in the bed with every single person just because there was that attraction to so many people and openness. Instead, this, this great power of desire, it just, I allowed myself to actually enjoy the, the sensations, the, what, the thoughts, just letting them be as they were. It wasn't a problem. It didn't dictate my actions, and we can all test that out. If you're letting desire be as it is, you still go about your day. You rely on open intelligence for short moments, no matter what you're doing. It wouldn't really work to abstain from everything and to try to put yourself in the extreme state of just sitting in a box and taking short moments. I mean, some of us have taken up that practice, locking ourselves in a room and trying to maintain a state where we don't do anything. And that, For me, that wasn't effective, and I don't see the results of many other people where that was effective to really come into a society and then enact our beneficial potencies. You know, that practice is it's just neutralization. Neutralizing desire. That's a, key, that's a key understanding. We're not neutralizing data by... When you allow things to be as they are, you're not neutralizing it. 
You're just, you're not indulging it, you're not avoiding it or replacing it. You're letting it be as it is to see that it is this power surge of open intelligence. Then the trainings unerringly direct us back to this open intelligence. And what does that mean for us as a human? What does it mean in terms of the grander context? The texts are so powerful and elicit the direct instructions that help us to not emphasize data. And then you start to feel more and more empowerment. <clears throat> Turning to a trainer for guidance when things get sticky or tricky or complicated. You know, okay, I'm having a hard time resting with desire. I just feel desire for so many things. I'm confused. What do I do? You have all the trainers to rely on. Or if you have a personal trainer, you write them an email. A trainer is somebody who has tested out the Four Mainstays lifestyle, really devoted their life to this, and that's all they want to share with us, is how to empower this whole planet of people. So the trainer is just, you know, I'm only sharing my direct experience. And then the community is the fourth mainstay. The community, when you get together with we have like a hundred people here every day. I'm sure everyone here feels intense desire every single day. You're here in Goa, half the people are not wearing many clothes and everybody looks so attractive. They're all tan and a hundred people working together in a setting, everyone feeling desire, everyone also feeling everything else. Maybe everyone's feeling jealous, anger, hatred upset, irritation, annoyance. You could make a whole list of all the data that we all experience. Now you know what will happen if everybody's emphasizing all those descriptions. There will be more arguments, there will be you know, vying for power, there will be exclusion, there will be just, yeah, it just wouldn't work. I mean many people have tried with all the best intentions but it just does not work. So here, very practically, we take responsibility for our data streams. Like I said, you can experience all those things. You let them be as they are and you see you actually, you just continue on. You're able to function clearly, directly, carefully, and yet with a lot of style and humor and zest. Nobody here has been dampened down into some kind of neutral robotic person. I never ever see that. At times it may feel like that just because it's a whole new way of perceiving existence and reality. But that it won't last. It's just another data stream arising and self-releasing in an open intelligence. So more importantly I say life becomes like an adventure. A really powerful adventure but for the benefit of all. It's like how can I use my gifts, my strengths, my talents to enjoy my life and then contribute that to everyone or anyone who's, you know, interested. You know, something like constructive criticism, it more becomes empowerment. You know, we always find ways to improve our offering and everything we do here. If we see a, something that we want to share with another person, we might very much, you just ask, may I offer you a suggestion? And if they say yes, then you can offer it. If they say no, then keep it to yourself and rest deeply with your urge to want to change something. And very naturally, these changes anyway occur. The change is for more harmony, more enjoyment, more benefit. They just naturally occur. So you need to test that, though, to see that that starts to come about. Uh, indecisiveness or decision making also for me just I used to spend so much time trying to make decisions you know important decisions we may all make a million decisions every day but there are a few key ones that tend to take a lot of our attention usually involving money career relationship <laughs> so if you have to make a decision where you realize oh I could either lose a lot of money or I can make a lot of money or Potentially I could be with this person or maybe not or, you know, it just creates a lot of data. So personally, I've just found it much, my decision making becomes very spontaneous. I don't know what's happened, but just over the six years of being involved in all four mainstays, 
I don't spend a lot of time brooding on decision making. You know, the, the fear of running out of money for me is, is not an issue anymore, or the fear of having money is not an issue. I've just really taken that all the way and let all the data about money be as it is, rely on the Four Mainstays lifestyle to, to see there is complete support and experience available. And um, I know I have a community of friends who will just be there to support me, a trainer to help me if there is a difficult decision. But usually it's just a very short list of what is most beneficial about this decision and what would not be beneficial. So, you know, I, I could probably talk 15 minutes on this, but just to say, I would say, test it out and the next time a big choice comes up for you, rely on the Four Mainstays. Rely on short moments of open intelligence. Let all that data around that decision be as it is. It self-releases like a line drawn in midair. Rely on a trainer for their experience. Pick up one of the texts or the book and read it, and you'll probably just have all kinds of insights into your choice you want to make. And talk to the community.